Okay, so now we're gonna talk about my three-step process for drawing from sight, which means drawing something in real life, not something from a photograph, but actually drawing something that you see before you, okay? So the three steps are to sketch it out, um, just put everything where you think it should go in the drawing and make it very general. So you're only gonna sort of put in shapes, you're not gonna do any details at this point. So put it in where you think it should go, that's first. Second is to do your corrections, and I have several techniques that I will show you in this video for correcting it. And when I say correcting, I'm referring to fixing the um, drawing in terms of things like overlapping, in terms of uh, are the angles and the curves in the right spot, are all of the um, objects in the right spot, uh, are the sizes um, in proportion to each other. So for instance, um, is the this shoe like, this big and this pot is only this big in your drawing? Um, making sure that everything is in relation to each other size-wise and in terms of where it's situated in space. So that will be the second stage, doing these corrections. And then the third stage will be where you do um, any kinds of details, um, any kinds of shading. And so you're gonna wait for a long time to do that kind of thing. You don't go in and start drawing all the details right away because you're probably going to have to move things around um, after you initially draw them um, during the correction phase. And if you start to put in details from the beginning, it's just a big waste of time because you're gonna end up erasing it. Um, so the more general you draw it at first, the uh, better it's gonna be. So always draw from general to specific. No details at first. Never ever details at first, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna show you the very first stage here. Um, but there is a, a little bit of pre-planning before we start the drawing at all. So even before the first stage, I need to figure out, this is a still life, I need to figure out what part of it I'm gonna draw. So um, I wouldn't necessarily have to draw the whole thing. We talked in the lecture uh, previously about thumbnails. And so I could um, try to um, zoom in on part of this. I could just sort of use my fingers here and pretend like it is a, 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 um, a window through which I'm looking. Do I want to just draw the shoes and the flower and that skull? Do I want to draw that skull um, and the bones? Um, so you're basically um, doing thumbnails to decide what, what you want to draw. And so I think I want to draw the skull, the bones, the um, blue chair, uh, so now I can think about what orientation I want the paper. Do I want it to be vertical or horizontal? So let's try it out. I'm just going to do a quick thumbnail here. And we'll remember that's just a little tiny drawing. Let's say I'm going to make it horizontal. Let's say the skull's here. Here's a little bone. And you see this is very um, quick. And let's say we only see the top of this a little bit. Okay, so I like that composition. Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's try it horizontally. So I got the chair. Let's put the chair over here. Skull. The thing next, uh, the bone next to the skull. Chair comes out. So I've cropped in more, and I don't really get to see much of this bone anymore. So let's try it horizontal, but not cropped out as much. Let's make the skull kind of small here. Um, here's the bone next to the skull, the chair, this bone sticking up from the, um, uh, this thing, <laughs> the pourer. Um, and now I see that I've got all this empty space over here, but I can see um, a sheet coming out, I can see something behind there. And so basically I think I probably zoomed out a little bit more than I meant to. And I could do a bunch of these, but what I think I'm gonna do is something vertical something that sort of takes up this amount of space. Okay, I kind of like the way that this composition looks. So remember, if this was a homework project, you would be taping the edges before you um, did anything. But this is not, this is just me practicing. Um, so when you're in class, you don't have to tape the edges. So what I'm gonna do here is just sketch everything in where I think it should go. So you're just using your intuition, and you should do this really quickly. Um, by the end of the semester, I think you'll be able to do this in just a few minutes, maybe two or three minutes. Um, but at first it might take you a while, it might take you like five or ten minutes to do this. But you're just trying to um, 
lock everything in. No specifics. You don't even have to draw the angles the way that you think they are. Just kind of put shapes places to uh, lock in where you think they're going to go. All right. So I want the chair to be a little bit to the left. So I think it sort of goes, and if you're new to drawing, this might not come out at all kind of where things are supposed to go, and that's fine. So I'm going to have the skull be right about here, sort of this shape. Um, there's something next to it. The chair comes forward, goes across. I think uh, maybe that's too much. Pull it back a little bit. And I'm using um, the vine charcoal, and I'm doing it very, very lightly because I don't want these marks to be permanent because I'm going to be moving things around. So for instance, I don't like this part. I think it should have been higher where that line is, so I'm just going to go like that. Remember, you're using um, your charcoal to add, but you're also using your eraser to subtract. Um, and then there's a bone that comes up here, thumbs down. And another bone sticks up here. And there is the uh, vessel that they're sticking out of that hits the chair about there. And it goes down like that. Sort of. Um, it's got a handle, and then the chair pops out to the side leg of the chair, and what else have we got in here? We have a white sheet that comes out about here, I think, and here's the edge of the table. You can see that there is a typewriter sticking out uh, back here. It has a bone on it. And uh, there's really nothing back there. So it's kind of a bottom and left heavy composition, which, which isn't perfect, but um, it's okay for this demonstration right now, just to give you a sense of um, how to go about laying this out. I mean, I like that it's uh, not totally symmetrical and because the skull is looking that way, it's gonna kind of make it, um, make the eye pull over here so it won't be so bad that it's uh, um, asymmetrical. Well, it's very important in your drawing that you always uh, stay in the same spot. And we call this spot our vantage point. Um, we talked about this in the lecture as well, because if I were to uh, draw from here, uh, make a correction from here, um, and then I were to walk over here and make a correction of the skull against something else from over here, now suddenly I'm seeing the side of the skull. The skull is wider than it was over here. And so the comparison wouldn't make any sense. You always have to stay in the exact same spot. You don't want to get high or get low. And that's why it's also very important to make sure that you can see what you're drawing and see your page at the same time, okay? And if this is a multi-day drawing, if you're working on your homework assignment, I would, and you have to move things around in your room because um, you're drawing right in the middle of the room or something and you have to put it away to go to bed and take it back out, what I would do is take a piece of your masking tape and mark the floor exactly where you were standing and mark exactly where your drawing pad was um, so you can get back in the same position the next day for drawing uh, whatever it is that you're drawing, the setup that you've made or um, the landscape or whatever it is, okay? Um, it's also very important that you, uh, if you're using an easel to draw, that you have it to the side a little bit so you can see uh, the still life and you can see your paper at the same time. Because if you were to have it, I see students often do this, and the problem with that is then you have to put your head over here to see what you're drawing and then come back over here. And every time you step over here, your vantage point is going to change. And so it's important to always be able to see everything at once so you can stay in the same position. Okay, and so um, in the first stage, I blocked in where I want everything to go, and the next stage will be to make the corrections um, in terms of making everything in the right uh, proportion and spot on the page to what, what it really is in real life here. And I have a number of strategies for making those corrections. 
which I'll show you now. And so um, the first thing I want you to do is pick something that is sort of in the middle of the composition and is sort of a medium sized thing um, and that would be your key for making corrections. And so looking here, um, I think I'm going to use the, hmm, I'm going to use the skull. I think that this bone is actually better in terms of its size, um, it's sort of medium size, the skull's pretty big um, in terms of how big and small everything is in the composition. Um, but I can't use this because it's overlapped by the skull. I need to pick something that's sort of medium size, sort of in the middle, and um, that you can see in its entirety, nothing's blocking it, um, to use as your key. And the key is going to be the one thing against which we correct all the proportions for the other objects. And so the reason we want to do that is it would be, um, if you've ever played the game telephone, you know that if you tell somebody um, a sentence and you, you whisper it and they whisper it to the next person, they whisper it to the next person in the body and it gets all messed up. So it's very similar. If I were to use the skull to correct the size um, and location of this bone, and then I use this bone to correct the size and location of the chair, and then I use the chair to correct the size and location of these bones, and these bones for the, um, for the vessel that they're in, by the end it would get really wonky. And so what we're going to do is compare everything to the skull. So it's all going back, and that's why we call it the key, because it's the key to making everything work out. All right? So the first thing to do is to correct the key against itself. And so by that I mean I want the ratio of the height to the width of the skull to be um, accurate before I start to use the skull to compare uh, sizes and locations to other things. Okay? Okay, okay, for this part of the video, you're seeing from my vantage point. And you'll remember that the vantage point is the place um, that you stand for the entire drawing. So I was just saying a moment ago that if you were to change the vantage point, see how it changes the proportions of everything you're looking at? You don't want to end up with something that looks very cubist. So I want to stay in the same position the whole time. So I'm holding this so to make this um, possible for you to see through my eyes. So it's going to be a little bit shaky. Um, I can't help that. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So we've got the still life and we've got where I marked everything in here. And I said that I was going to use the skull as my key. Okay. So I'm going to take something, um, a measuring tool. So we're actually going to use a pencil as a measuring tool. We're not actually going to use the pencil as a pencil. Um, but you just need something with lots of marks up the side. That's really easy to hold uh, lightweight, um, for this because you're going to note where things um, end in terms of the markings, okay? It'll make sense when I do it, okay? So the first thing I have to do is correct the key to itself. And of course, the key is the skull. So I wanna determine um, at what point of the height and what point of the width I'm gonna measure this thing. Because you can see um, here to here is not as wide as here to here, for instance, um, or not as high. And here to here is not as wide as uh, here to here or here to here, right? So we want to always measure from the same spot, okay? And so I think I'm going to measure for width, I'm going to measure from uh, the back bulge of the skull to straight across from it where the eye is, okay? Um, where, oh, up to the eye end. So let's get the markings up so I can see. And I'm going to lock my arm. See, I'm not going to bend it because if I bend it, sometimes I'll measure it from here and sometimes I'll measure it from back here and it'll be completely different, right? So always stay in your exact vantage point and lock your arm because your arm is not going to change in length, okay? So I'm going to go from where I decided to measure the width and I'm going to mark where um, it ends. And so it ends by this A. We'll just remember that it's the A by the L, okay? And now for my height, I'm gonna measure from the very tip here to what's straight above it, which is right about there, okay? And we know that it does go a little higher past that, but um, it also goes a little bit further up past that. So as long as I determine where I'm gonna measure it and I always measure it from the same spot, it's fine, okay? So I'm gonna go straight up from this point to up here. So I'm putting the top of it right with that edge and the bottom of it right um, I'm marking with my thumbnail where it ends. So that's about the right height, okay? 
So we'll see that it went to the C, all right? The other one went to the A. So let's see, it's about um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a little bit more than uh, five, okay? So really, it's just a little bit, um, it's a little bit higher than it is wide, okay? Because the width went to the A and the um, height went to the C, right? And so um, I think it's about um, a little bit more than uh, four fifths. So it might be like four, um, and a half fifths or something like that. So it's pretty close to the same, um, but it's not quite, it's a little bit higher than it is wide. And now we know that. So looking here, let's look at this blob I made <laughs> to sort of represent the skull. Um, so this would be sort of the part of the skull that would be, now I'm switching back to charcoal so I can actually make a mark. This is about the bottom of the skull there and the top would be straight above it. It's not quite the right shape, um, but you get the idea. So from there to here is about what we measured on the skull. And we, for the width, we did the bulge of the back of the head to um, the eye here. And so here I had the bulge of the back of the head ending kind of right before the paper ends. Um, and so that would be here to straight across from it. And I think that's wrong already. <laughs> But let's compare now, all right? So that is way more um, than, it's almost twice, right? Um, or like one and a half, and we don't want that. We want it to just be slightly um, higher than it is wide. Right now it's quite a bit higher than it is wide. So it probably has to be wider or shorter or a little bit of both. So what I think I'm going to do here um, is make it wider. Okay, so we said that this would be about four fifths. And so um, if this were uh, divided into five, let's say one, two, three, four, that's not, not quite big enough. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it is about that width. One, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, I was way wrong. It has to go out to about here. Okay, so I'm going to mark that. Oh my goodness, I had it so wrong. <laughs> so let's just double check this again, right? Um, so about one, we could use a, we could use something like this as well. So um, I'm actually going to use the ruler. That would be easier. I don't use the ruler when I'm actually putting my arm out here because it covers up so much, but on the on the page, I can use the ruler. So let's see. Go, that goes to seven inches, and that goes to um, six and a half inches. So that's still, that's actually a little bit too wide. Um, we want it to be about four fifths, so I'm gonna pull this over just a little bit. All right, so this isn't exact science, but we're getting um, a sense of it. Okay, so now I'm just going to erase all of this because we don't need it anymore. Now I'm just going to keep this very general. I'm not going to draw the skull yet, but I do want to start to get the shape of it in there. Um, okay, so one thing I need to do is determine where this axis should be in comparison to um, how far to the right or left from the width it is. And so looking over here, I could say that the axis um, from the tip to the top that I measured before is about, it looks like it's about maybe one third of the way across um, going from right to left or two thirds of the way across going the other way. So um, let's find out. So that axis goes right through the middle of the nose. So we can go to the edge to the nose is to the S, right? So we'll keep it at the S, my fingernail. We'll do one, two, three, yep. So it is about um, two thirds of the way from here to here is where this axis is. So um, grabbing charcoal again, 
Let's see if that's the case with ours. One, two, three. Yeah, that's about right. So that seems to be in the right spot. Now let's see about the height. So we said we were gonna measure from the bulge at the back of the skull to what's straight across from it, which is this here. So that would be there. And it goes right through the eyes, which is handy. Um, so let's see from the top of the head where we did this, this other axis, um, which was right here. So not the very tip top of the head, but where we measured that to the middle of the eyes is, remember I'm locking my arm, is that far. And then there's another. So it's about two and a half, okay? So let's see if we were to put this in the, this axis, can I fit it at about that height? One, two, okay, nope. Um, this is two, not two and a half. So let's make it a little bit higher. Erase that. And I, like I said before, you need to do this with a very light hand. You don't want it to be very um, dark, these marks. Oh, it's hard to erase and hold the phone at the same time. Um, okay, I paused it for a second so I could erase. Um, so now let's check it. I've got one, two, and about a half. So this is correct. We know that we um, have the skull in exactly the right place. Okay. So now we're going to in, in um, uh, relation to itself at least. So now everything else is going to be altered in its position and size to match the skull. And so I want to get the shape of the skull in really quickly as well. Um, and the next strategy I'm going to suggest to you um, is to get angles accurate, okay? So we can see that there is an angle here from there to there, from the tip, which would be here to somewhere in the middle here. Um, so I can use my um, pencil here, but instead of using it to measure, I'm gonna lock in my angle. So again, locking the arm, okay? And I don't wanna have the pencil backwards or forwards, I want it to be perfectly flat to my viewing area, as you can see here, almost like it's a window pane. And I'm gonna turn it to the angle of that angle there, with the bottom of the skull. And then I could pull it back over here, and this is the angle that I need, okay? And I have to pause this to draw it because I only have two hands. Okay, I've drawn it now, and we wanna see where it should stop. Um, and so, um, let's see where it stops in relation to the width that we eat. So this was the overall width, right? And this ends right here. So let's say if this came straight up, let's see what would be straight up from that. Straight up from that would be this kind of bulge here, all right? Um, so let's see how far across, how many bolt um, between the edge of the skull and that bulge we can get, all right? So one, two, three, three. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So it goes to about one third of the way across the skull. And so we've got this whole width. Um, let's see the, it would come up to about straight, I'm sorry, straight up that way. So let's see one, two, three, and there's a little bit more. So it's probably goes too far. Let me erase a little bit there. And now let's try it. So now it would go uh, straight above it would be right about here. So one, two, three. So we know that this ends in the right position. Okay. So now in this um, moment, we have just, uh, in this, this last uh, action that we did, we have just used two different um, measuring processes. The first one was the getting the, uh, you can use whatever you want for this, but getting the angle accurate and by pulling it over with the locked arm. And then the second was the what we did initially, which was to use ratios um, to and fra uh, fractions to um, have it end in the right position. So we've got the right angle and it ends in the right position. 
So I'm going to do that with all the other angles of the skull and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got basically the angles of the skull where it ends um, marked in. I'm not going to worry about the middle of the face yet. Remember we said, you know, you do the details a little bit later. Um, and remember, this is not marking the um, kind of center of the face like it would, like you might have seen in um, portrait drawings. This is just marking the height where we measured and the width where we measured, okay? And so that's why it's, um, that's why these lines are where they are. And these lines are going to get erased, all right? Um, we can actually erase them now. We don't, we don't really need them anymore. But let's keep them um, just to remind ourselves exactly where we measured from, okay? Now, um, we should see if my corrections were accurate. And we're going to re um, review the three things we did so far. So one of them was angles. So let's do the angle from there to there. Let's lock the arm, hold it across, pull it back over. The angle is correct. Okay, the other, um, another one of the things that we did was uh, measuring. So we can uh, do that again just to review and see if I have this accurate, okay? So we can measure anything against anything else. So what I'd like to do is measure the height from here to here in this angle to the height from here to here in this angle, okay? So I'm going to hold this out and uh, lock it and I could either um, see where it is or I could just pull it down below. So I'm gonna, I locked it in. I got my thumbnail um, stopping me where I need it. And one, oh, so from, actually from there to there, seems to be pretty similar than from there to there. So let's do that again. Marking it there, locking it in and preparing there. Yep, so I'm measuring from this, the edge of this angle, not the whole thing from here to here, but from here where it starts to curve back to here. All right, and they are the same, so let's see if it's the same on my drawing. Yep, about the same, so I'm good there. Um, and the third thing that we did, um, the third uh, trick is to see what is above and below uh, things. And so let's see, the top of the curve um, is a little bit to the left, uh, the top of the curve of the skull, is a little bit to the left of where we measured. Um, we measured from here originally. Uh, the top of the skull is a little bit higher up, and you can see here I did that, I made the skull a little bit higher up. But let's make sure that I have it peaking at the right spot. And so what I could do is just um, measure, I could see what's below it. Um, so this would be the highest part of the head and below it, um, we could compare it to the features, but the features aren't drawn in yet, so I'm going to compare it to the bottom here. So let's see if this is directly below the very peak of the head. So we just pull up and see. Yep. Um, something else we could do um, is compare the back of the bulge of the skull to where it ends over here. Um, let's see if I have it in the right spot. So the back of the bulge goes to this tip right here of kind of this this bulge. So this is the furthest part back and let's see, yep, it's it's accurate. Now let's say that I went like this and pulled across and this was like up here or down here, then we'd know either this was in the wrong position or this was in the wrong position or something was off, okay? Um, and so those are the three things you do when you're trying to make corrections. I know I keep saying it again, but this is basically what you're going to be doing in the entire semester. Um, um, getting the, the fraction, how far across something is um, from the larger shape, um, the, um, the angle, pulling the angle over with your arm locked, and seeing what is directly above or below and seeing if it's, it's the same in your drawing, okay? So now that I have the edges of the key all correct, um, remember the skull is our key, we're going to compare everything else in the drawing to the key. So I'm going to start with the um, distance between the edge of the chair and the skull, okay? And so um, let me grab something to use for this. I'm going to do the fraction thing here. Um, I'm going to go from the, the widest part of the skull where we, we had measured, which is right there, straight across, and I'm locking it in, and that went to the X there. 
just in case I slip my finger and it will remember how to put it back. Um, right, so how many of those do we get across the skull? One, two. Okay, so the distance between here and here is half of the distance between here and here. Okay, so we're gonna look at my drawing and see if that's the case. So we have the chair ending here. Can we fit two of this distance um, in the skull? One, two, oh, no. So I know that the, um, this is supposed to be exactly half of this. And so we know that this is too wide because it's more than that, all right? So let's try to figure out where it would be right about halfway across the skull. Um, so the middle would be right about here. So let's see what the distance is between the two. One, yep, that's right. So chair should end here, okay? So I'll mark that in. And I know that um, this is in the wrong spot now, so I'm gonna erase it. And I need to know how high the chair should be um, from here to here, and where the, um, which would be that, and what the distance is here as well. And of course, then I also have to get the angles and figure all that out. So let's just do one more um, together here. I'm gonna figure out the distance between uh, the bottom of the blue part of the chair and the skull. So locking my arm, putting the, um, uh, lining it up, and it went to the O, oops, a little bit fuzzy, to the O. Um, so if I slide, I can always go back to it. That's why I like something that has marks on it. All right, so how many of this distance can I fit in the height of the skull? One, two, three. Okay, so this should be one third the height of this. Let's see if it is. One, so here we have it, and then one, two, three. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is already in a good position. Once I get this height fixed, figured out, um, and kind of the width across here figured out, I'll get back to you. Now, the way that I'm gonna do the width here is by um, comparing the skull to it in a similar way, but I'm going to use the entire width of the skull as the smaller part, right? Usually something smaller is being compared to the skull, how many skulls can fit in. Now we're gonna be seeing, I'm sorry, how, how many, um, distances can we fit into the width of the skull. Now we're going to be taking the whole width of the skull as the larger, um, uh, as the uh, part that's going to be compared to the larger thing, which is the chair. So let's just do that real quick together. The skull goes to there. And let's compare that down here. One and about two thirds. So this distance should be about one and two thirds of the skull, okay? So I'm gonna get all those angles in and I'll be right back. To do that, I wanna show you one more thing that I noticed I've done wrong here. And so I'm looking, I have to stand back so you can see, but I wouldn't be standing back in real life because um, I wanna stay in my vantage point. But um, so you can see that I put the um, peak of the chair, see the chair goes up to a peak. I put it um, directly down from this part of the skull. But if I'm looking here, it's actually, that would be about here actually a little bit to the right of that and so I need to push the peak over to the right a little bit in comparison to the skull just a tiny bit just a sm smudge smidge <laughs> okay so now I've got the chair in the right position um, you can see that it curves around this way and so that's one thing that can be a little bit tricky is um, oh I dropped my circle sorry about that one thing that can be a little bit tricky about something that curves is that you can't just do exactly a straight mark. So what I recommend is that you go right to the corner um, and then to the other edge and get the general layout of the curve. But then remember that you have to put the curve in there and just kind of use your eye to determine how um, um, acute the curve is or how kind of sloping the curve is. Okay, some things you just have to eyeball. <laughs> um, Okay, so let's um, have a look over here, and you'll notice that there are bones that are 
um, in front of the chair there. So it was very strategic. It was strategic of me to do the chair first um, because if I were to do the bones first, then it would be hard to go back and measure the things behind. So generally, if lots of things are overlapping, it can be easier to do from the back forward. All right. Um, so get the big overall structure mapped out before you have the little things that um, interact with the structure. So probably the next thing I should do here, instead of doing like this little bone here or this little bone, is um, do this vessel because um, it's also large and um, lots of smaller things are within it, kind of sticking out of it or interacting with it in various ways. Okay, so at this point, um, let's figure out if the vessel down below the chair is basically in the right spot. So um, we know that you could just simply see what is directly above and that's a good thing to check um, to see if it's in the right spot. But it's also important to remember that we're doing everything by the key. So let's compare the width to the key as well. So first let's see what's above. Uh, if we go straight up from the edge of the lip of the vessel, it goes into this hole in the, in the um, skull. So let's see if mine does. So that, that hole um, would be um, right about here because it's a little bit further over from that. And it is about there. So that seems pretty good. Seems, uh, and in mine, the edge goes right to the corner. Let's see if that's the case. Um, the edge here, ooh, the edge does not go right to the corner, right? The corner goes further to the right um, than the edge of the lip on this side. I'm talking about that spot, right? So I know that my uh, lip goes way too far out. So immediately I can erase these bones. And remember, we want to keep this chair in in the spot where it is, because the chair is already pretty accurate in comparison to the skull. So let's erase this stuff, lighten it up. And kind of move it over. So the actual edge right there is below where the chair bends in. So the chair bends in here, and that's where it starts to turn. And it was just a little bit to the right of that. So it would just be about there. But we really need to compare everything to the key to make sure that we have the right um, widths. Remember I said we don't want it to be like telephone comparing the uh, skull to the chair and then the chair to the vessel and then the vessel to the bones. We wanna make sure everything is accurate to the, uh, the key, which is our skull, just to make sure that we're not getting far away from ourselves um, in our measurements, okay? So let's see the width um, from there to there is locking it in. Let's put our markers there, out there. The O in the word charcoal, in case we lose it. Now let's compare that to the skull. All right, the skull, it's, um, it's a little bit bigger than the skull. It's about maybe um, a sixth more or so. And so we don't always have to make it a perfect fraction. The point is it just needs to be a little bit bigger than the skull, but not too much bigger. So let's see the skull is that wide on my drawing, almost the entire pencil. And let's compare that to the lip. All right. So, um, what did we say? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm <laughs> losing it. Uh, it was to the O. Yeah. Um, which one was bigger and which one is smaller? I'm forgetting it. Okay, so the vessel's the vessel's slightly bigger than the skull. Okay, so um, the skull was the width of the pencil, so we'll mark it in there. That goes to here, and yeah, it's a little bit wider. And so this actually worked out pretty well, just you know, using this what's what's above and what's below trick. Um, so this is the edge of the back of the vessel. This is where the um, lip of the vessel is, and again we have um, sloping angles. So when I go to put in this angle here, it's not going to be perfectly straight. You can see it, it curves, and so we're going to have to take into account. But I'm going to use this uh, trick just to get the general overall sense. And I also should see what the distance is between this and this, and this and this compared to the skull. So I'll be back. Okay, so I've got the main body of the vessel marked in here, and you can see I had the bones way over here before, and I can't be because they come out of the vessel, so I'm going to have to adjust 
um, these things. And remember, I need to compare everything I adjust back to the skull um, to make sure that we're not getting too far away either. I'll be back once I have everything blocked in and then we'll start the third phase, which is where we get to do sh shading and details. Okay, so I've got all of the measurements accurate at this point. Um, you can see that this is what I've drawn. I'm gonna stand back so you can see it. Um, so now it's important to go in. You're gonna have lines all over the place. I've already cleaned this up a little bit, but there, um, some things are in front and some things are behind. So for instance, if we look here, you can see that this is. these are the lines of the um, folded blanket behind. And you can see that my lines overlap so let's erase those just to make it clear what's in front and what's behind. Um, there's a bone on a um, uh, um, typewriter. That's actually what that is. Let's see, <laughs> um, back there, and it just peeks out right over here. So let's uh, correct this because you can see that here we've got. I drew the typewriter first because remember we, we draw the overall structure and like the large things. The, um, the things upon which other things are laying first. But when we do that, it ends up um, having lines through the things that are on top of it. So it's important to go back and erase that as to not confuse yourself when you're doing your shading next. Okay, so I think a lot of students at this point, I'm gonna stand back so you can see the whole thing, um, but you'll just, you know, you're welcome to stand back and look at your work from a distance. That's a good way to see if the proportions seem right or not. Um, but then always get back in the correct spot for your vantage point. Okay, so everything is looking um, pretty good here. So I'm ready to shade, um, but you're not going to do like you might imagine and shade here and then shade here and then shade here and then shade like, you know, you're not going to do one part at a time um, in a really uh, detailed way. Instead, we're going to go from general to specific. Um, just like the way that we drew it, kind of just blocking things out and then getting more specific. Um, and so you're going to do several um, rounds of shading and we're going to go from the back to the front and from general to specific. And so um, I drew the doorway back there just because I thought it would be good for my composition, but you don't really have to do that. Um, you can just sort of uh, darken or li lighten or just have a general uh, background behind the still life. Um, I'm not going to draw every single thing that I see in the background like that easel. Um, I'm just going to kind of generalize the, the, um, the, the values that I see back there. And value is a word that refers to how uh, light or dark it is or, some, or you know anything in between. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the back, uh, I said. And so I've got the door back there and it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna take my um, charcoal sideways because it's faster, darken that up. And then it gets a lot lighter as it moves into the room. So let's sort of have it darker and then get lighter. So you can see that I'm blending with my fingers here. And it's important that you um, have very dry hands. So if your hands are sweaty at, before you go in to do your blending, it would be good for you to wash them and let them dry. Um, of course, you don't want to touch it with wet hands. That wouldn't be good either. <laughs> so now it's going to be a process of adding and subtracting. Um, when I say adding, I mean I'm putting charcoal down and making it darker. And subtracting, I mean that I'm lightening up with the erasers. All right, so looking over there, I can see that um, the floor is sort of dark, but not as dark as back there. So we're gonna make the floor out here lighter than what we see in the hallway. And we're going around everything. We can go back later and be a little bit more specific. If it happens to be darker here, lighter here, we can do that. But right now we're just doing a general toning. Um, and when we do this, um, we're comparing everything to everything else um, in similar fashion to what we did getting the sizes right. But instead we're comparing how dark something is um, so you can start, sort of think of it like a key as well, like find something that's the darkest and something that's the lightest thing that you see in your composition. And then you can compare how dark and light everything else is to those two things. Smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Okay. So 
once you finished the second stage of this, when you did all your corrections, you basically had a set of outlines. And remember we said in the lecture that outlines are not a thing. They make things look flat. And so what we need to do is get rid of the outlines, um, ultimately. Um, and we do that by kind of just going up to the edges of things with the blocks of tones um, that are near them and then stopping right at the edge. Okay, so we see that there's a dark strip along the bottom there. So I'm gonna put in a dark strip. I'm sorry. When you draw, you're gonna find that you hold the paper still when you're, when you're drawing. And it's, I can't do that right now because I'm holding my phone. <laughs> so it makes it a little tricky. Sometimes when you do this, you're gonna lose your outlines and then you'll just have to go back and put them back in. It's a lot of back and forth, this project, uh, this uh, um, method, I mean. So the wall is almost white. I mean, it's painted white, but there's shadows and stuff on it. I'm not gonna draw every single shadow and everything on the wall and the light socket and stuff because um, this is just basically the background. I'm going to have more detail in the foreground, so I'm just going to very lightly tone this walk that has a bit of shadow on it. And I might actually blend with my kneaded eraser. Um, because we're trying to get a very light gray. We don't want this harsh edge there. Okay, so you see how there's this edge here. Um, what we want to do is get rid of that most of the time, but there actually is kind of a, a shadow stripe that goes down. And so we can. Um, Go in here and trying to get some of these little stripes in there, but we can go back and do that later. Um, let's stick with going, staying general to specific. Uh, so we can see that there's a darker shadow over here because the door is casting a shadow. So it's going to be darker here behind the door than it is over here. See, darker behind the door than it is over here. So I'm going to go a little heavier with my charcoal here and then lighten my hand as I go across. I'm just literally pressing less hard. And we can go back in and blend then. And what about the door itself? The door is darker than the stuff around it except for the, the hallway behind it where it's really, really dark. So we can darken it to a greater extent. And you see how I just darkened this door to a greater extent and now it's almost like those um, outlines aren't there anymore. If you want to make it really dark, you can turn your charcoal to the tip. Now, I'm going to overlap things I don't mean to by accident, and I can just go back in with the eraser and pull those out. So there's no need to be precious about this because you can always go back and erase. Now we do want the edge of that door to have a bit of a tone, so I'm just going to pull over a little. Okay, but now we've got to go back in and um, define the edge again. Hmm. All right, so now suddenly we don't have outlines anymore, and it looks a little bit more uh, realistic than it did with the outlines, right? See, this stuff looks a little bit more cartoony. This stuff looks a little bit more like a room. And certainly, it's not a good spot um, for a finished drawing. You'd want to go in and get those, maybe use your ruler to get the edges a little bit straighter because this is a rectilinear building. Um, but you can get a sense of um, when you start to go up to the edges of the outlines with your highlights and shadows, um, 
they kind of fade away and they no longer exist anymore. So I brought that darkness right up to the edge there and now the outline isn't necessary anymore. And it looks like, um, it looks like what it is more or less, but we're not gonna get any more detail at this point. This is still pretty basic in terms of um, detail. There's, you know, things are a little bit lighter in some places, a little bit darker in some places, but we're gonna go back later and actually put in the details and more specific um, kind of shade shifts or value shifts. All right, so now let's look at this. The chair is darker than the wall behind it. I think the wall behind it still needs to be a bit lighter because it is a white wall, even if it has shadows cast on it. So I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit more. And now I'm gonna put in um, darker tones where the chair is. And you can see that it's a little bit darker at the top of the chair. It's a little bit darker behind the skull than it is in the rest. And there's a little dark uh, area that comes up around here. So uh, let's take that into account when we paint, do this. So I'm gonna start with just doing general tone everywhere. This was a, um, not a demo where you had to wait for me to finish every step. I would take my time with this a little bit more, get this super even, but for the sake of this video not being like five hours long, I'm going <laughs> to uh, make it a little bit less refined than I would maybe otherwise. And it's fine if I kind of even go like this and go over into the skull, because I can always erase it, right? You can still see the, um, you can still see the outline a little bit. So don't worry about the skull too much right now. We just want to still be able to see where our edges of things are. Um, so I would go in and smooth this even more if this was real, um, uh, you know, a, a finish, it's gonna be a finished drawing for a homework assignment or something. But now remember we said that there are some shadows in certain places that are darker than others. So one of the places was behind the skull. So let's darken in this area, but it's not a really distinct edge. And so we're gonna pull this out. And like I said, doesn't matter if it overlaps the skull because the skull's in front. We haven't even drawn the skull yet. So when we do draw the skull, um, I can erase anything that's, um, that I'm putting on the skull right now. Okay, so there's also the top has a darker line. And it's also darker um, along here. Right, and darker down here. Um, really dark between the skull and the bone. So let's make this really pretty darn dark using the tip. have it fade. And as we're shading, we can also um, do the opposite of shading, which is pull out highlights. And so um, eventually when I get to the next sort of stage of my, um, my drawing here, I'll pull out lights along here too. But for now, let's just get the general overall tone. We can get more specific with it later, but you can see that. And then it's pretty dark um, all along the bottom of the chair. 
So remember, um, we're going from general to specific and we're, we tend to do things that other things are sitting on um, before doing the things that are um, sat on them. <laughs> so I said to go from back to front and you might be thinking then why don't we do the skull next because the skull is closer to us than this. But this is also the thing that the skull's sitting on so it just makes more sense to do the big a broad section first. So I'm going to tone all the big areas um, and not the little details and then I'll be right back. So now I've got most of the things that are behind like basically toned um, and I just want to remind you that you're using for this entire thing you're using your vine charcoal your willow charcoal um, and not your compressed or your pencil because we, we really want this uh, um, pigment to be able to be pushed around. You've seen the way that I'm moving it with my hand like this quite a bit. Um, now when you're doing this, some of your edges are going to start to fall away. You know, you're going to lose them from the drawing that you did initially. And so let's say this got really confusing in here and I'm like, oh God, where's the edge of this and the beginning of this? You might have to do something like, um, let me get back in my position. Go back to the um, previous project, I'm sorry, the previous um, um, stage and pull back some of those angles again, but that's okay. You can do that. <laughs> It'll only take you a second because you basically have everything um, done at this point. So you can see I've done the background, the chair, the fabric, um, and the typewriter, but I haven't done any of the things that are resting on top of these things. So now I'm going to uh, go in and do those. Um, you can see um, uh, it's really dark in here, so I will go in and darken this quite a bit, and I'll do probably the vessel before I do the bones because the bones are on the vessel, um, and I'll be back. Now everything has um, some pigment on it, so everything is toned, um, but it's not. It's very kind of general. Like uh, the this is vaguely darker. This is sort of in the middle. This is kind of lighter. So we, we're just getting a very broad general sense of um, what we're seeing over here now. So at this stage, we're going to go back and make it more specific. And so we can do this in maybe like two or three stages of, um, of um, shading that will get more specific with each. And so right now, this um, uh, sheet, this uh, white sheet with the shadows on it, is just um, kind of one tone with some lines <laughs> to indicate where the folds are. So now at this point, we're going to slow down a lot and all over the, um, the um, uh, piece of paper, we're going to go in and get a little bit more specific and then a little bit more specific. So at this point, um, just like at any other uh, stage of shading, we're going to be using the eraser and the, um, the charcoal simultaneously. And so while I'm starting to make some of these folds, I'm just going to talk to you about this uh, course in general. I think at this stage in the video, you might be thinking that this is a little bit overwhelming, um, all these steps and everything that we need to learn here. But really, what I want you to um, recognize is that you're going to be learning this process all semester long. So I don't expect you to be able to do this this week. I expect you to be able to do this by the end of the semester, um, you know, perfectly. I expect you to be able to do it, but not perfectly. We're just going to be kind of getting better and better and better at this skill all semester long. And so we're going to do different um, projects. We're going to start off with um, still lives like these, and then we're going to move on to landscapes and then eventually portraits and figure, human, human figure. Um, but we are not um, going to be learning totally different techniques for each. You're going to be painting, or just sorry, drawing different um, subjects, but you're just going to be using the same, um, the same method with the three steps all semester long. So it's only really one thing to learn, and it's all about learn, getting better and better at it as the semester goes along. So I don't expect you to be perfect with this right away. Um, you don't have to know how to draw at all. If you just keep doing these three steps, you're just going to get better. All right. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm starting to um, make, at this point, 
At this point, I'm starting to get more specific with my shading. You can see in here, um, when you do your still life, you can just generalize the background, but I wanted to put the door and the wall in um, simply because it's the only thing that's really straight in the painting, and also I thought it would be nice for the composition. Um, in terms of, and the composition refers to the layout of objects within the picture plane. Um, so a couple of things here, you can see as I'm working, I'm putting my finger down to stabilize. When you're doing the big kind of broad gestural drawing early on before you get specific, um, you probably don't have to put your hand on the paper too much, but once you um, are beginning to do tiny things like this, uh, little tiny points like that, that's when you really need to have your finger touching so you can have um, some kind of leverage over what you're doing, your hand won't shake. Um, and so when I put my finger down, you can see that it's pulling up the charcoal. And that's just something that happens, so you're gonna have to go back and forth. But I do have a recommendation for that. One is that it makes sense to place your finger somewhere that is kind of a big, broad area, like I've done here, that will be easy to go back in and, and just uh, um, correct it really quickly like that. Um, I, students tend to put their whole hand down, that makes a huge mark. So what I suggest is you use your pinky, um, if you've ever played basketball, you know this word pivot. It's when you are, um, your foot stays in the same position and you're allowed to move the other foot around, but the, um, the one foot stays stabilized. Uh, that's what you're doing with this finger. You're going to move your hand around, but just keep your finger in one spot. And if you do that with your pinky, then you're only going to mess up a spot about the size of a dime there, okay? I also want to remind you about this tool, the tortillon. It's great for doing blending in little areas like this. Sorry, <laughs> get right up to the edges in a way that you can't do with your, sorry, <laughs> it's hard to do this, uh, in a way that you can't do with your finger. Okay, um, now I have a straight line here. How did I do that? I, and, and over here as well. You can see I did shading all over the place in the background and pulled it all over. And then I laid this down and I dragged my white eraser, the one that is really straight along the edge of the ruler. So remember I said the ruler can be really helpful in masking off areas. Uh, you can also hold it up to the edge and just do the darkness to the side. But generally some of the dark will kind of overlap into the light and so be sure to go back on the other side and mask it off and pull it up with the uh, eraser. And sometimes you'll need something to be not particularly light or dark in a rectangle uh, shape. Um, you know, a straight edge. And so with that, you can go in with a tortillon and get a gray in there. You can see mine is a bit gray, not totally white. Okay, I've worked a little bit further on this. I'm going from uh, back forward and top down um, on the page because that um, once I have one section completed in terms of, you know, starting at the top or starting behind, then I don't have to put my finger down in these spots anymore and I can kind of leave them to the side, but I do want to stop at this point and show you a couple of things. Here there's a mark that's uh, harder to erase because a little bit of oil in my skin. So what I can do about that, since I can't just wipe it away with my hand anymore, um, it's stuck a little bit more, I can use this kneaded eraser. I would be pulling it clean, get a clean section, and then I can erase. Helps to pull up that oil a little bit easier. And I can go back in and it looks good again. All right, something else. Um, I'm working on some details in the nose right now. And the way that I've done this is I need to make a really small um, marks that are erasing. And so I took my kneaded eraser and molded it around the tip of my tortillon. And now see, I'm putting my finger here because I haven't drawn this part yet. And now I can go in and pull away the, oops, pull away the edges. But I want to be lighter. So I'm basically turning my tortillon into a, a negative pencil, <laughs> uh, one that um, erases rather than adds. Okay? Okay, at this point I want to show you um, the teeth because the teeth have lots of little variation in the shading, but they're all very close to the same uh, tone. So the way that I've done this to make this fast for myself is I've just kind of mapped out where they're going to be with some charcoal edges, and now I'm going to use my tortillon to actually draw them in. And the whole time you're drawing, you should be looking at the thing that you're drawing and not just assuming um, that you know what things look like. because. Sometimes the schema that we have in our head for what things look like are not really what they look like. 
So I'm kind of blending out these middle tones with my tortillon. And um, so it's darker around the edges and the overlapping areas. And down here, I'm gonna pull up the differences. So you can see I didn't even draw the teeth at first. I'm just, with the charcoal, I'm just doing it with the tortillon. And I'm looking at the still life the whole time to make sure I'm putting things in the right spots. Okay, and now I'm certainly gonna need to do some erasing. So I would go in with my, um, my kneaded eraser. Oops, just dropped it, sorry. My kneaded eraser wrapped around my tortilla like this to make a nice point. And I'd go in and pull out the highlights then. So a lot of the things when you're drawing them, you don't actually draw them with the charcoal. You can draw them with the eraser. You can draw them with the tortillon. You can see how these teeth are starting to look like teeth now. If I had just drawn them with charcoal, they would look really kind of outliney and cartoonish. Okay. At this point, I've gotten more specific um, from here up, kind of in, in the section up here. <laughs> so it's not kind of totally finished yet, but I'm gonna focus in on that section for the uh, kind of the, another step of, um, of shading so that way this video doesn't become really, really long. So these drawings should take you about six to eight hours to complete for your homework assignments. And um, you can see that within all the stages, I go from general to specific. And when you do your first few drawings, you probably might only get to this stage of specificity across the entire page um, in your six to eight hours. And I don't want you to keep working at that point. I want you to stop at six to eight hours because you know, I don't want this class to take over your life. <laughs> but as you keep uh, doing this, you're gonna get faster and faster, and eventually you'll be able to do a very uh, detailed drawing um, in the same amount of time, okay? So this level of specificity is okay at first, um, and you'll get faster. Now that I'll be starting the uh, details for the um, part that I'm going to be completing in my drawing, which would be, this is the part I'm going to take to completion, um, I can start to use my charcoal pencil and my compressed charcoal, which is the really, really dark stuff. I would use my compressed in an area where there's a whole lot of super darkness, almost black, and kind of in a bigger section. So I might use it. Um, there in that hole because it's a bigger area it would take a longer time to fill it in with this whereas i'm going to use this uh, charcoal pencil which is really black for things like the black holes inside the eyeball and maybe that uh, dark section in there i will start that now so you can get a sense of how these work uh, remember now i've got to kind of keep my finger way out here and stretch over you see what i'm doing i'm keeping my finger there to pivot so i don't erase the stuff that I have already drawn. So I'm gonna lean my hand over as far as I can. <laughs> and I'm going to really get dark in these sections. And with this kind of uh, charcoal, I can still use my tortillon. It just um, doesn't move quite as much as the other uh, vine charcoal does, but you can still blend with it and take it right to the edges. Okay, now let's look at the compressed. All right, let's use the compressed in uh, the bone hole right here. I'm not going to go right to the edges because I don't have quite as much, because it's sort of a blunt instrument, I don't have quite as much um, ability to be detailed with it. So I'm going to, instead of going right to the edges, I'm going to use my tortillon to bring it over to the edges. Or 
Or I could also go in with my charcoal pencil and take it to the edges as well. But it actually kind of blends out. There's a lighter spot in here and then it sort of blends out this way. So this is perfect. Okay. See how the I'm starting to put the super dark colors in there is really starting to make it look uh, make it pop, look make it look more voluminous. Another technique for getting a subtle shade is to take your tortillon um, and actually rub it on some charcoal. So um, I can't show this and hold the phone at the same time, but I just rubbed this onto some charcoal. And now when I go in here, I'm gonna make this uh, divot right here a little bit stronger, but I don't want it to be too strong. So I'm using the tortillon instead of actually applying uh, new charcoal directly. I get a very subtle way to shade. And you can see that I'm using the side of my tortillon here. You can use the point for very um, tight things, but you can also use the sides to blend out. Now, I just also want to point out something that I did incorrectly earlier that's affecting me now. Um, I was a little bit too heavy handed when I made this mark across the face to designate where um, the lines, where the um, measuring points are going to be. And now that I'm shading, I'm having a hard time erasing this. So be sure to be really um, light early on, okay? I'm gonna wrap up the video at this point. I could just keep um, adding more and more details on top of this and making it more and more specific in smaller sections um, and make it almost a photorealistic drawing if I just kept going and going and going. But I'm gonna stop at this stage for the sake of not having a really long video. Um, what you would keep doing is just the same techniques that we have been doing, but in smaller sections. Um, you know, Remember to go from general to specific because you don't wanna to have to erase things um, and move them um, after you spend a lot of time drawing them, all right? So um, I do not expect you to be able to draw like this right away. I, um, the first couple of weeks of class, if you're new to drawing, I want you to focus primarily on the first two stages and then get into the third stage as much as you can in your six to eight hours. Um, but you don't have to do any more than that simply because it's not very specific yet. You know, if you bring in something that's kind of more generally shaded at the beginning, um, after spending six to eight hours, I completely understand. And I'll kind of grade you progressively um, harder as the semester goes on, because as the semester goes on, you will have um, mastered these earlier techniques, like the first couple of stages, and will be able to spend more of your six to eight hours on the later stages. So don't worry too much if you felt intimidated by this video. This video contains basically all the information that you need for the entire class and we'll use the entire semester to get good at this. All right. Um, one last thing I want to point out is that you can see this is a little bit um, more jagged, the bones, and this is a little bit more smoothly rendered. Um, that's because of the different textures and we'll get into textures later in the semester, but for now, just try to um, draw things the way that you see them. That's always gonna be the case. You can see that the chair is smoother and the rock is a little bit more craggy, okay? Um, thank you so much.